Hello, everyone. My name is Wei, a product engineer of ArcGIS Experience Builder. Welcome to this demo session, Mobile Optimization in ArcGIS Experience Builder. We will cover the following topics. Let's learn the idea of responsive web design. And how does Experience Builder support web responsive design? Then I will show you a demo for details. Finally, I will summarize some tips for responsive design in Experience Builder. First of all, what is responsive web design? It is the idea and approach to make web pages render well on different devices and the screen sizes. You know web apps or web pages can be accessed from multiple devices nowadays. Desktops, tablets, or mobile phones. Therefore, there are tons of screen sizes available on the market. When designing a web app, you have to consider responsive design so the end user can view and play your web app well from any devices. How does Experience Builder support responsive design? Well, Experience Builder characterizes devices to three types, large screen, medium screen, and small screen. And Experience Builder provides those three screen modes for you to edit and preview. And in each mode, Experience Builder also provides some command sizes. The large mode refers to the desktop screen sizes, and the medium usually corresponds to tablet screen sizes, while small modes has screen sizes for mobile devices. When designing an app in Experience Builder, you focus on the large screen size but you can adjust and optimize the other two screen modes as well. You can select any provided screen size to preview and edit. When you switch from large screen to medium or small screen, you will see two um, responsive modes, auto or custom. In auto mode, the layouts are transformed automatically. There are several transform rules. If you use a fixed layout, a widget inside, if set with relative position and size, they will be transformed by scale. If you use a structural layout, such as a row, it will be transformed to a column. So in small screen, horizontal arrangement will be vertical. Then if you use some compound layout, such as a screen group, Experience Builder also deal with the transformation for you. For example, the side-by-side -side docs of a screen will become up to down in smaller screen. While if you enable custom layout, it allows you to arrange widgets manually. You may adjust the widget size and the position to fit the current screen size. And in custom mode, you can remove redundant widgets for limited space. Remember, you should not delete a widget directly, but rather move it to the pending list. I will explain this more later. On the other hand, you may add additional widget to small screen to replace the removed one with customized configuration. Experience Builder app remembers the customization in medium or small screen modes. So when user launch the app in different screen sizes, it is responsive. But there are several points you have to be careful when you choose to customize the layout for medium or small screen. First, the widget that is shared in different modes, it is the single one. It means that the configuration or content of the widget keeps the same in different modes. So be careful to change the content configuration of a widget in one screen mode. It will affect the other um, modes as well. Only the size and the position can be customized in layout screen mode. That means only the size and the position of a widget can be customized in different screen modes. That means the same widget can have different size and position in different screen modes. Then do not delete a widget directly because the widget is shared, remember? Deleting from one mode will make it disappear from the other mode as well. You should move the redundant widget to a pendant list. The pendant list stores the widgets that are not synced up in different screen modes. Once custom layout is enabled, any newly added widget in one screen mode cannot be synced up automatically to the other two. 
You can sync up other screen modes by manually adding the new widget from pending list. The pending list will automatically check the difference among the three screen modes. There are other support for responsive design as well for your convenience. All the templates provided by Experience Builder have already been customized for the responsive design. We have that included the app and the page template, log template, and the screen group template in a scrolling page. So when you are using any of those templates, you don't have to be too worried about the responsiveness because we have dealt much for you. However, when you fit in your customized content into those templates, you still need have to check those um, different screen sizes to see if they are rendered where there and do an adjustment if necessary. Also, Experience Builder deal with some behavior response for the end user. For example, the pop-up will show in the bottom panel in the small devices instead of the pop-up window you usually see. And also, some map tools have been uh, transformed to display well in small screen as well. Now let's see a demo for details. In Experience Builder, you may notice that there are three screen modes, or we call it three different device modes, large, medium, and small. When designing an app, you can focus on designing in large screen mode. However, to build a responsive app, you still need to do optimization in medium and small screen sizes. So you can switch among these three different modes and check out and do necessary editing. And then in each mode, Experience Builder provides some common screen sizes. So you can switch and check out. Now let's see real case how to do optimization for smaller screen sizes. When turn to medium, by default, Experience Builder just scale down the layout. But in small screen mode, or we call the, the mobile device mode, there are more transformation rules. The idea of optimization are the same. So in this demo, I will just focus on mobile optimization. I've previewed a page in desktop mode, but when you see in mobile modes, there is some mask here. So how could that happen? The design looks good in the large screen. Well, there are several points you may ignore when designing for large screen size. Let's first talk about the header. You may notice that the icon image here is shrinked a lot in smaller screen. Why? Because it is using some unit that is relative. It's using the percentage unit here. In some case, for some elements, actually you'd rather keep the size. For example, the icon, the branding icon, you may not like it to change a lot when screen size change. So you can use absolute unit here by turning it to the pixel. When designing responsive app, you should pay attention to the size position and alignment to avoid the displacement. We can also set the position to use pixel. So when we switch to different screen modes, it won't change. Now you see it keeps the same size and same position, but the title text now is overlapped with the image and is cut off. So how we can deal with this? We can also check the position and size settings of this text widget. It's also using the relative units um, currently. It is set to 10% of the whole header's width. So when you change it to the small screen, it still captured the 10%, which is too small to display the full text. So we can also change it to use the pixel. While to deal with alignment, we need to consider the navels screen. We, we need to consider the navels while dealing with the alignment to avoid overlap with other widget. You should know the neighbor's widget size and position and make a reference. Since the image now is using the pixel for both its position and the alignment, the title text here should better use the absolute unit as well. Otherwise, it would be difficult to make reference. The image now has 60 pixel of width and have 25 pixel offsets to the left. So when deciding the app title's alignment, you have to make it considered. So it should be at least 
85 pixel to the left, right? But you don't need to do calculation by yourself. You just turn it to the pixel unit. So it will do it for you and it remembers absolute position. Now the icon and the title looks good in mobile screen. There is another problem. The share widget captures a lot of space and it is overlapped with other widgets. And the menu widget is, is cut off because of the limited space as well. So for further adjustment, you can turn the layout to custom mode and add your own touch. Here we'd better make the share widget use the pop-up icon to save the space, right? However, you cannot do configuration directly here in smaller screen because the widgets are shared in different modes. It will affect other mode this presentation as well. So here we want in large screen, it keep use the inline style. However, in smaller screen, it can use some um, icon pop-up style to save the space. We can remove this widget and move it to the pending list. Do not delete the widget directly because delete it in one screen mode will delete it other to other mode as well. But move it to the pending list will just keep the widget in the back end. And what we are going to do is add another share widget to this small screen mode and make it pop up style, resize it. You may also adjust the icon size and adjust the alignment. Also, we can remove this subtitle text widget so the content won't look too crowded. We can also move it to the pending list. For the menu widget, actually we won't do the similar steps as we did for the share widget. Just move it to the pending list and add another menu. However, I'll use an icon type. And adjust the widget size and change the icon color. Just do necessary optimization for those widgets to make it nicer in current screen modes. Those newly added widgets are currently independent. They are not automatically synced up in other screen modes. But you can add them, but you can add them from the pending list to other screen modes. The pending list will keep tracking of the difference among these different screen sizes. To have a brief summary here, to have a well-responsive app, when designing an app from the desktop mode, you have to keep in mind the idea of responsiveness always. Pay attention to the widget alignment and the size. It will help save the unnecessary customization in smaller screen. When editing a fixed layout, in this case the header, if you have elements that are close to each other, use the same unit and take the neighbor's size and position into account. Next, let's see the body. Here is a list widget and a map widget that are side by side. We want to use a relative unit for both of the widgets because we want them to keep the same proportion of this page Whenever the screen size change, we want them to together occupy the full size of the page, right? So we can see the list widget size and the position. We want it to make a 30 percentage of this whole page width and uh, make it align to the top left. For the map, we can make it 70% uh, of this page's width. So both together will fulfill this page and make it align to the top right. It's okay to keep it at bottom right, but just personally, I'd like to make it at top right. So now whenever the page changes, they both still keep the same proportion, 30 percentage and the 70 percentage, and they are occupy the four page widths. However, in the mobile screen, because it's too narrow for the widths, side by side is not a good idea. So what we can do, so you can turn to custom layout again and adjust their size and the position. Make it 100% of the widths, but just 30% of the height. And the map, make it four widths 
70% of the height and, and make the bottom right. So now they become top to down. It looks much better. But there's an but there's another easier way that is to use a sidebar. So here I make a copy of the same content of page one. And uh, I want to use the sidebar here as a container for both two widgets. So I will move these two widgets to the pending list uh, temporarily. So the pending list can help you keep the widgets that you don't want to show on canvas currently. And now to add the sidebar. Make it a full size of this page. And now add back the list widget and the map widget as well. Make them fulfill the each panel just, just by clicking the alignment option here, for size, so it looks much nicer. Then turn to the smaller screen, make it a custom, and change the sidebar to be up to down, so it looks nice soon. The reason I used a sidebar here is that the one panel can be collapsible, so in smaller screen, user can view the content much better and you can decide which panel can be collapsible. Now let's save and launch the app. So when you change it to different screen sizes, you see they look different, right? But it is still, it's the same app, but they keep the different layout to make the responsive. Furthermore, I have added a scrolling page to talk about the optimization of some structural layout. You know, in a scrolling page, you add the content block by block. You use rows and columns a lot to organize content. You can also use a fixed panel in scrolling page, but the idea of optimization is similar as we discussed in the full screen page. So next, I will explain some transformation of structural layout for responsive design. Here, I added uh, some screen group. Screen group is a layout structure that consists of multiple screens. Each screen are stitched to each other, and you can, you can view one screen at a time, and it, it can be scrollable. This is another template of screen group. And I added two blocks, consist of columns and rows. Let's take a look in mobile device. Generally, it looks good, right? You may notice that the screen group has automatically transformed. The scrolling panel of the screen group has transformed to be the four weeds, and it's floating on the main stage. And the other style of screen group, which originally is, is side by side, and the right panel is scrollable. Now in mobile device, it becomes up to down. The main stage dock keep at the top and the scrollable panel stay at the bottom. Also, the original rows have transformed to be column, so horizontal arrangement becomes vertical. So everything looks good, but there are still some tiny problems. For example, the text here is cut off a little bit. Why that happened? Still, we need to go back and check the original setting of the text widget. You notice that it is using absolute height, which is 63 pixels. But the width is the full size of the container, which is the column, because it is stretched to the parent container. So when you change to a small screen, the container width decrease, so as the text widget. So the text content with an absolute font size won't change. And for the limited space, the content text will be wrapped automatically to the second line with the fixed height of the text cannot display the full content. So it is cut off here. We can fix it 
by turning the text height to um, auto. So the text widget height will automatically adjust according to the contained content. And let's fix others as well. So the auto mode means the size will depend on the, the contained content inside. It will be responsive. Now going back to the mobile view, they looks much better, right? But you can do other customization if you like. By turning it to the custom mode, say you can adjust the text here to make it larger so it can display better. And also you can adjust the column paddings to make the card looks wider. Say 40 pixel around so it will have less padding space at both sides do the same thing as well furthermore you can actually adjust the order of those blocks to move them up so the order changes now save the app now let's preview this looks pretty good Everything rendered well. And let's check the large screen. Looks great. So you can see that the app keeps a different version of layout for different screen sizes. It is just a simple demo of mobile optimization. But I introduced the idea how you can think of your design to fit in different devices. The main point is to pay attention to widget size and the position, those will affect the responsiveness in different screen sizes. Here are seven tips for you to do responsive design in Experience Builder. First, make the best use of structural layout widgets to organize the content, such as row, column, set bar, section, and etc. Those widgets help you arrange the content more organized. Second, you are free to use fixed layout, but when you use it, you have to pay attention to the size and the position, especially the unit you choose to use, whether to make it absolute or relative. You need to pay attention to the alignment and offsets of the widget inside a fixed layout. Third, you are suggested to design the app content first and customize the layout finally. Because only after you complete the content you want to present, you will know how it will look like in different screen sizes. Try to add a new or duplicate a specific widget and change the content and the format to fit in smaller screen. For example, you may want to use smaller text size in mobile devices to display the text well. So you can use another text widget, change the font size to fit in mobile device. Or you can use icon menu in small screen to save space. So the widgets in different screen modes don't have to be exactly the same, but rather they can be different and customized. Fifth, remove unbefitting or unnecessary widgets to pending list. Don't make it too crowded in smaller screen. Six, make sure you preview your app in all available screen sizes. Check if they render well when the screen size changes. Finally, make use of the templates that Experience Builder provided. Because it is for your convenience, the templates have already been optimized to display well in smaller screens. So if you take advantage of those templates, you don't need to worry too much about the optimization, but probably you still need to make a small adjustment based on your custom content you feed into the template. Finally, the responsive design is highly related to the layout. So you are suggested to learn and understand the concepts of layout in Experience Builder. You can check out another session for this topic called ArcGIS Experience Builder, designing apps with style and the layout. After you have better understand of those layouts in Experience Builder, responsive design will be much easier. In addition, here are some documentation resources that might help as well.
Those are all I want to share today. Thanks a lot for attending this demo session. Looking forward to your feedback. Bye.